Hey everyone, I want to talk today about the psychology behind false allegations of rape. Now, in reality, it takes very little time to make an allegation. The argument that it's emotionally draining, it's terrifying, re-traumatizing, all of those arguments are moot in this discussion because we are talking right now about women who weren't raped or assaulted. There is no trauma to relive. I'm just a catalyst. This was ripe. And I just have my name attached to it. Uh, people want it. It's sort of like when, when like David Beckham attaches himself to Armani underwear. People want the underwear everywhere, all over the place anyway. He's just, he's just available. He's playing soccer. It's off season. You know what I mean? I, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not me. It's just the time. In February of 2014, Ben Radford wrote a really great article about false allegations as a skeptic, published on Center for Inquiry. It's called The Anatomy of False Allegations, and the link for that is below. I encourage everyone to go read it. There's some really fascinating um, ideas and information in there. So he starts with the true story of a false allegation and uh, selected one that would not be controversial. It was proven, in this case, to be absolutely false, with lots of physical evidence that the woman had lied, and her final admission in the face of that evidence that she had made the whole thing up, and why she'd done so. I'm going to punctuate this article with clips from an extended interview with Lucy Ducater, who was shown to have lied about her relationship with Gian Gameshi in a recent and current trial happening in Canada. The decision, the verdict, is going to be um, announced on the 24th of March. That's this month less than three weeks, and hopefully it will be followed by Lucy Ducatera finding herself facing charges of perjury in the near future. And, but it's not about me, it's like I've attached my name to the story, and so what people are believing is they're believing the story. So the case being analyzed for a large portion of this article is the case of Robin Levitsky, and uh, so some of the references are specific to that, but the uh, analysis applies to all false allegations. So, what would make a person think that falsely accusing another person, much less a friend and former lover, of sexual assault and abduction was acceptable? There is no indication that Robin and John, the man she accused, had any sort of falling out, or that her accusations were made in retaliation for his infidelity or abuse. It would be comforting to think that Levitsky is the rare exception, but there is nothing in the record suggesting that she is aberrant in any way. Robin has no previous criminal record and appears to be a typical young college student whose interests include cheerleading, the Big Bang Theory, Kanye West, Kesha, and photography. Could you imagine how weird that is? No, no, I know it was a long time ago, but what, what did you do? Actually, Levitsky's reason is mundane and common. The false report of a sexual assault is often used as a cover story for consenting but illicit sexual activity. That was the case with Levitsky. There are any number of reasons why a person might falsely claim to have been sexually assaulted, including revenge, which is what I feel Lucy de Cater had in mind when she made her claims, and seeking sympathy or attention, which I think is the case for the 23 other people who came forward. And a little bit of that plays into Lucy's story as well or to cover up for some crime, indiscretion, or infraction. On Sunday, or shortly after this all came out in the open on Sunday, you tweeted, why are women afraid to attach their names to the Gian Gameshi situation? What did you mean by that? I'd already attached my name to the Gian Gameshi situation, mm -hmm. and I was stirring the pot because I was frustrated by what I was seeing. Did you know then that you were going to speak up? I had already spoken to them, to the star. I'd already spoken to them. Okay. So... It was a provocative tweet. I'm a jerk. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually swung, and it's offering a lot of warmth for the folks who, who've been hurt and, and who have been sort of unable to come forward. And I've had people saying things uh, that were very, very kind about me, but more than anything, there's this thing that's come up, this thing that's... Uh, hashtag, I believe, I believe Lucy. Lucy. It's been trending all day. It's been trending. So bananas, right? What these cases have in common is that the person making the false report did not think through the consequences of their accusations. 
In fact, this is a recurring theme in false claims of many serious crimes, including carjacking, robberies, school shootings, and even sexual assaults and kidnappings. When asked by police or reporters why a person made false reports of a crime, typical responses are, I didn't realize it would be that big a deal, or I didn't think it would get this far. Um, I also don't like thinking about somebody who I know having a bad day, and Gian Gameshi is having a bad day, right? Well, I mean, some have said that today was really a turning point. Uh, today, uh, two PR firms have dropped him. Um, two? Uh, just recently, two have come out saying that there's a PR firm that has dropped him. A second woman has come forward. When Robin Levitsky is told that her statement might imprison an innocent man for life, she hedges a bit and states that such a punishment may be extreme, Perhaps only several years in federal prison for the, her abduction and rape would be sufficient to teach him a lesson. The phrase, several years, may roll off Levitsky's tongue as a trifling, abstract punishment for something that never happened. But pause for a moment and consider what that really means for the true victim in this case, the innocent man she falsely accused. I've got a very light approach to talking about stuff, be it like hobbies or things that are very serious. I can brush off most things and lighten most things because really we don't need to get serious about much. Um, when you don't have to pay or even think about the consequences of your accusation, it's easy to dismiss or minimize the damage done to an innocent person. It's also easy to assume that Levitsky's accusations are less serious because the case against the man would never have gone to trial. They never would have been convicted. However, such faith in the justice system rests on shaky ground. The fact is that innocent men and women have been convicted of serious crimes on the basis of little more than the alleged victim's word. While it is likely that the man Levitsky accused would not have been indicted or convicted, it is far from a certainty, especially if he's poor or underprivileged and must rely on a public defender. Not everybody can afford Marie Hennen. Suggesting. Mm -hmm. Gian Gomez did issue a short uh, statement today. No, he didn't. He didn't say anything. I intend to meet these allegations directly. Do you have any response to that? First of all, let's be clear that Mr. Gomez did not write that, but it probably was a very expensive sentence written by a public relations team with a lawyer team. Like, this guy is, he's, he's geared up with, with a team right now, which would make sense. So, so am I. <laughs> um, Not just John and Robin's lives have been affected by her lies. What of those who rallied behind Robin Levitsky, her family and friends who consoled her and supported her during the investigation, and those who joined her in accusing John? They, of course, had no reason to doubt Levitsky's claims, why in the world would she make it up if it wasn't true? And that's what a lot of people who've been supporting the alleged victims of Gian Gameshi are facing today. Even those who knew both Robin and John might not have completely believed all the accusations, but assumed that he must have done something inappropriate to her. Maybe he didn't actually abduct her in the usual sense of the word, but maybe he held her against her will despite her repeated requests to leave, and she was scared of him. Even if John hadn't actually abducted or sexually assaulted her, there must surely be something to it. After all, where there's smoke, there's fire, and people don't just make up these sorts of serious accusations out of thin air. It was much easier to believe the victim and assume that some sexually aggressive college boy had gone too far. No rational, sensible, moral person would falsely accuse an innocent man of abduction and sexual assault and certainly not to hide the fact that the 18-year-old was sexually active, yet as bizarre and implausible as it sounds, that is exactly what happened. So, and I, want, I, I do have to ask you about the incident. Uh, the incident? We'll call it the incident, or you can call it whatever you want, but can mm -hmm. you take me back to that night and just walk me through what happened? Sure. Now, this is just one woman in this case who's accusing the man of some misconduct, in the case of Gian Gameshi, you had a large number of women who came forward, but you must keep in mind that he was famous, and the incentive that the, anybody who'd been on a date with Gian Gameshi was being contacted by their friends and family saying, hey, are you okay? 
and they'd already been told by the media what sort of things might have happened to them. So the uh, that a number of people came forward here is really not all that surprising. Uh, I'm just sort of like interested in what you just said, actually. <laughs> um, if, from what I understand, and I'm sure that somebody listening to this will be able to, to correct me and write a mean tweet about how I'm dumb, but uh, from what I understand, if there are enough stories coming up about a situation which is dangerous, the police can start their own investigation without actually somebody coming forward. Do you, you know other women who have had? I've had stories brought to me, and I'm like, they can talk to me, and maybe we'll talk, and maybe they'll find a way to be able to say something. It is all unproven, and these are conversations that um, I'm hoping will come forward. But the, here's the thing. It's very uncomfortable to come forward with a story like this, except it's fair to say that if anybody was to now come forward and say that Gian Gameshi had hurt them, people would believe them. Most people do not go around accusing other people of things they did not do. And as a result, we tend to assume that there must be some reasonable basis for the allegations, even if it ends up being a misunderstanding. A friend of mine noted that part of the reason that sexual harassment and assault claims are believed on their face, even in the absence of evidence, is that they are so extreme and outrageous that the thought of the accusation being false is itself a violation of social norms. To falsely accuse an innocent man of sexual harassment and assault is so patently unethical and beyond the pale of acceptable behavior that many of us assume it pretty well must be true. Why in the world would she make it up if it wasn't true? Is likely the first and only thought needed to accept her claims. No rational, responsible, moral person would do that, and therefore, the question is then framed as either the college student who'd never been in trouble before and presumably had no reason to lie is lying, or there is at least some truth to it. We saw this in the decades-old rehash of allegations against Woody Allen in early 2014. The assumption that a grain of truth must exist somewhere amid the claims is a powerful one. So I feel like I can use my story as leverage, and they can um, bring forward stories that are really solid. Saul Kassin, a social psychologist who appears in the documentary film The Central Park Five, explains why it is often very difficult for people to change their minds once they've decided that a person is guilty. The problem is that once you form a strong belief that someone is guilty of a crime, the contradicting details are just that. They're details that don't fundamentally change our belief in their guilt. But uh, I think that if, if this situation, this really terribly sad situation for everyone involved, everyone who's directly involved, the women, Jian, the women's families and their friends watching them go through this, mm -hmm. Jian's family right now and his friends are really suffering. I know it because I know his friends. And, um, and if that could stop with some kind of resolution, that would be slamming. Not only was Levitsky completely indifferent to the damage she did to the man she accused, but perhaps even more shocking was Levitsky's adamant refusal to admit that she lied. Over and over, on at least three occasions, police asked if there was anything she wished to admit or correct about her statement. She said no, sticking to her story over and over, denying and denying the truth. The fact that it took nearly half an hour of police questioning before Levitsky finally admitted her lies is a fair measure of how determined she was to stick to her story, regardless of the consequences for John. And this is important to think about. Once you have lied, especially if you've gone and made a statement under oath to police, your investment goes up. And the need for them to stick to the story uh, basically increases tenfold, if not more. I'm just a catalyst. This was ripe. And I just have my name attached to it. Uh, people want it. It's sort of like when 
And like David Beckham attaches himself to Armani underwear. People want the underwear everywhere, all over the place anyway. He's just, he's just available. He's playing soccer at soft season. You know what I mean? I, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not me. It's just the time. Uh, the first question I asked you is, how's your day been? I, I, I don't even know how many messages you've gotten today, but I just did a quick search on, uh, with your name on Twitter. Oh, how'd that go? I haven't been able to look. Well, I saw Telling the truth, admitting that a person made a false accusation, can surely be a terrifying prospect. It requires a person to accept responsibility for their choices and behavior and admit they have done a grievous injustice to an innocent person. It can't be easy. But often doing the right thing, even eventually, is not easy. It means giving up the status of victim, admitting mistakes, and trying to undo the damage done. For falsely accusing an innocent man of crimes that could have left him imprisoned for the rest of his life, Robin Levitsky was given probation and fined $315, the minimum allowed by law, plus court costs. Um, well, it's, it's, it's too bad that it took a stranger to get people to believe a stranger was mad at a stranger. <laughs> you know, like, it's sort of like when, when, like, David Beckham attaches himself to Armani underwear. People want the underwear everywhere, all over the place anyway. He's just, he's just available. He's playing soccer at soft season. You know what I mean? I, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not me. It's just the time.